November 1943, a small island in the middle of the Pacific, Tarawa. Maybe only three miles long, 400 yards wide, but on it includes an airfield. Important to the Allies for their island hopping tactics. Equally important to defend by the Japanese. And so that sets the stage for this diorama. It will be on Tarawa. We're going to be using our M3 Stewart tank. And here we go in terms of laying out the diorama base. Working with insulation foam. These are leftover pieces from prior projects, just trying to figure out some elevations. Kind of getting a feel for it here. I don't plan anything out. You know that by now. Just kind of do it by feel. Place a few pieces here and there. Let's see what happens. Here's the figure that we worked on in the last episode. Something like this. I think this is going to look okay. And then what I want to do is kind of define, define the edges of this. And we'll use some rulers and straight edges here. And what I really want to do is try to make this as compact as possible. Make it just as focused as possible. Once I have an idea of what I want to do, the size of the base, I'll just go ahead and cut some of this insulation foam using my handy dandy hot wire cutter. Um, if you're interested in this, there is a link in the description below. I found this to be quite the important little tool. I do want a trench or some sort of a bunker scene here, so I want to change the elevation a little bit. It could go downward. I'm going to cut out a little section here, and then I was going to slice this in half again using the hot wire cutter just to give myself a little bit of a base in here, but allow myself a little bit of, like I said, elevation for the trench. And oh yeah, this other tool that I've had for a long time, but you'll see in a second, I just bought new bullets for this, the hot glue gun, which makes a lot of this so much quicker. So we'll slide one of those sections of the cut piece down in there. And now I have a little bit of elevation for the trench that goes down. And now we'll add a little bit of these spare parts. I'm not really worried about exactly what these look like right now, just kind of adding some different features to the scene. Another test fit. Let's see how we're looking here, and it's looking good. Okay, I did take a trip to the craft store, and in the craft store we've got <laughs> feathers. We have feathers of different sizes and shapes. We'll, we'll do that in just a second. I have Sculpey, which I think is going to replace my plaster here. We'll see what happens, but I need it for this next thing, which is... This is armature wire for, like, florists, what they use, and here are my bullets for the hot glue gun. So I have enough now for an, a few projects. Okay, back to the armature wire. Well, I'm going to be making some palm trees here. We'll get to that in just a second. But I'll also be using the Sculpey, and that has no rigidity at all. It's very, very fragile. So I need to add some sort of a structure on the internal side of it. So we'll twist some of these wires together, give it a little bit of an armature, a little bit of structure. Yep, we've got a couple of these here. Actually, we're going to make quite a few of these. And now we're going to work with Sculpey. And honestly, this is the first time I've used Sculpey. Um, it's... Much softer than I thought it might be, but it's it ends up being a very nice tool. So this is going to be part of my arsenal coming up. Roll these out basically to this diameter, the circumference of the palm trees that I want to build. And then once I have those, I'll just smash them out a little bit. Just kind of, you'll see here in just a second, add my armature in the, in the center, cut off the excess. And then we're just going to roll those up and kind of pinch them and crimp them together putting the armature in the center of the Sculpey to give it some, some form, some shape, so it doesn't want to just crumble on me. Once I have that crimped up, then just a few rolls across the table here, just put everything back into a roundish, roundish shape. And then these type of palm trees, I think they're coconut palms, they have basically a circular bark structure, so I just allow the weight of the knife, I'm not really pressing down, just kind of roll across it and just add some little circles across the, the bark to create some bark texture. A little bit of sanding once it firms up just a little bit, just to add a little more texture and take off any of those little high points. And pretty quickly here, I'm going to have a whole lumber yard full of palm logs. Okay, so this was the tricky part. What to make the palm fronds out of? I've tried a few things, some commercial products. I've tried making them out of paper myself. Then I stumbled across this idea of using feathers. So that's, again, back to the craft store, the feathers. Now it makes sense now, right? 
and I just cut the shapes of the basically the leaves or the palm fronds from the feathers and then just roughing up the edges a little bit with the scissors just to give a little more definition to those individual leaves and then pretty soon I have a whole bowl full of these and word of advice cutting up these feathers you end up with a pillow fight so I did most of this outside just to keep my room sort of clean speaking of clean I tried to do this all nice and neat laying out all my feathers trying to spray paint them in a nice orderly manner but you know feathers do what feathers do and they tend to want to fly away and it didn't take long before I just started individually holding my feathers turning my fingers green and adding the base color Once I had the base colors on, then I just add a little bit of a lighter tone, especially to the edges, a little olive green, and to the centers, a little bit of a tan brown, just to give it a little bit more of a realistic appearance. And then after a little while, well, I have a bunch of palm fronds here, just ready to go and create palm trees with. Okay, speaking of palm trees and palm fronds, I really have no idea of how <laughs> how these trees actually are structured. There's not very many of them where I live, but I assume there's some sort of a something on top of trees. At least I need something on top of the trees in order to stick these onto. So I create little balls using Magic Sculpt. Just kind of plop those on top. And as I'm waiting for those to dry, let's go ahead and paint some of these palm trunks and just a dark gray as a base and then a couple of colors using a light gray or medium gray and a light brown color just stipple those on with a ratty brush once those balls are dry just get those a little color as well and are ready to start moving on here to try to create these palm trees Well, once again, I have no palm trees as a reference, and I really don't know the names <laughs> of all the different elements of palms. But they all seem to have this type of a fiber or sort of a stringy, I'll call it a beard, <laughs> for lack of a better, that kind of is underneath the, the palm fronds themselves and often on the base as well. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm using some of the seagrass, a little bit of super glue, and I'm going to try my best not to glue my fingers onto this and get too much of this grass stuck under my fingers for the rest of the day. So let's kind of push some of that on there and that will create create that effect. And then into the magic sculpt into these little balls I just put a few pilot holes and now I can just dip some of those palm fronds or the feathers into the super glue and put them into those little holes and start creating these palm trees. And it really doesn't take too long at all before I have what's a pretty decent representation of palm trees. At least I think so. Here we go. There's our little forest. Well, now with that element out of the way, those palm trees, and we have our elevations on our scene here, it's about time we can start putting everything together. Just a quick time out to allow me to say thank you to my Patreon. If you do like this channel and would like to support it further and the work we do here, please consider joining. Early viewing of these videos, special feature videos, work in progress photographs, a Discord server. I hope to see you over there. Thank you very much. Well now, we're back to our Sculpey. Again, this is the first time I've used this, but I, I do like this. I think this is going to take the place of the plaster that I've been using up until now. It's soft, but it's much cleaner, and it basically does the same process. I can fill up all these little contours and make the elevations. This is the air dry variety, which takes, I don't know, maybe four to five hours before you get a, a, a good solid surface. But I sure don't want the baking type because I think putting insulation in an oven would not be a good idea. But this longer working time is actually kind of a benefit because it's much more relaxing because you're not fighting against the fast cure time of plaster. And it allows me to add all these elements to the scene. So we've got some palm logs over the side to add little bit of retaining walls and we'll add some smaller palm logs over the top to be the start to become the roof of what will be this trench or pillbox area here and just kind of fill things in and then here here we go we've got back to my magic sculpt yep but I like magic sculpt because it's a little bit more firm than the sculpey so these will be these little BBs right now will end up being sandbags and so I just getting them to the right shape and size 
and we start plopping those in right around the edges here to become retaining walls. And I can use a toothpick, just give a little bit of definition, kind of squeeze them down here and there, just give them a little bit of weight and get them to contour to the earth. Add a few more here and there. And as you can see, the scene is starting to come together. Speaking of the scene coming together, well, let's make sure that this Stuart tank is going to look in place. So we'll just kind of press that, a little bit of clean wrap or plastic wrap over the top of the Sculpey. It's still soft. Press that down in there just to make sure everything is feeling like it's part of the scene instead of floating on top of the scene. Nice, nice tracks right there. Pull up this clean wrap. It's good to go. And speaking of good to go, we're at the end of episode one of building our diorama base, all these elements take quite a while to dry, so this isn't moving quite as quickly as perhaps I hoped. But in the next episode, we'll continue on building this base and get everything finished up, adding some texture to the top. If you do like this episode, you do like this channel, please hit that subscribe button. And again, if you'd like to support this channel further, there is a Patreon, and I hope that you would join us over there as well. Until the next time, everybody, take care. And, of course, happy modeling. We'll see you in the next episode.